Welcome to Lab 4 of our stm 3260 MOOC. In this lab, we will use the printf functions to output on a UART for debugging purposes. The objective of this lab will be to redirect the printf to UART number 2, so UART 2, which is connected to the STLing virtual com port that is on your nuclear board. We will then use the terminal that is inside the stm 32 ID to view the printf output. On the nuclear board, PA2 and PA3, which have alternate functions for user 2 TX and user 2 RX, are connected to the virtual COM port of the ST-Link. We will configure the user in the following mode. Asynchronous mode, the speed will be 115,200 boards, will use 8 bits of data, no parity bit, and 1 bit of stop. No hardware for control, transmission and reception enabled, and no advanced features used. We will use the terminal that is inside the stm 32 qid For the lab, we will create a new project under stm 32 qid So inside the project, we will enable the user2 in asynchronous mode. Make sure when you know, user2 has been selected that PA2 and PA3 have been selected. Okay, so we're going to create a new project, so you know that, new stm 2 projects. Same as before, we're going to select the stm 32 c 31 c 6 that is on your nuclear board. So this is the one right there, all right, and then press next. We're going to give a name to the project. And then finish. So this is going to bring the graphical interface. So we also call that CubeMX. And now, under so connectivity, we're going to select user2. Select the asynchronous mode. And now, see, so uh, this is part of the configuration we'll do later on. But at least we need to verify that PA2 and PA3 have been selected. And that's correct. For the clock configuration, so we will select 48 MHz, which is the maximum clock of the C0. For the clock, so go to clock configuration. And we're going to configure the peripheral clock to be 48 MHz. So this is the clock where the user 2 is connected. So this is also the maximum clock of the STM42C0. User 2 configuration. We will configure the user 2 at 115,200 bots, or bits per second. 8-bit word length, no parity bit, one-stop bit, and we'll keep the default settings for the rest of the configuration. Now we go back to the pinout and configuration, user2, and in the configuration settings, select parameter settings, and we're going to select 115,200 boards, 8 bit of length, no parity, and 1 bit of stop. So make sure you have this configuration right here. That should be the default one. For the rest of the configuration, we'll keep the default settings. After generating the code, we will need to add a little bit of code. So two parts for this. First will be uh, define, that will be added, as you can see. And then number two, the putchar prototype function, where we're going to uh, call one of our HAL function, so HAL underscore UART underscore transmit, and then we'll use you know, the handler of the UART2 that we're using. So we're going to add you know, these two pieces of code into the generated code. We can now save our project. This will also generate the code. Yes, and we're going to go to the C, you know, in C++ perspective, in order to add the code. First, we'll add the define. So all the code to be added is also can be found in the comment of this uh, video. So, you know, 
if uh, you need more time or if you need to copy and paste, you can find it in the comments of this video. Otherwise, you can just pause the video and add the code. It's very simple to add, as you can see. Okay, now the second part of the code to be added, we'll put that in this section here, user code uh, begin for and end, you know, for, right here. And this is the prototype function, you know, calling our HAL function to transmit using the user tool. For the application code, in the main function, we'll add, you know, like two lines of code in order, you know, to have a message that is displayed every second. So we'll display hello world every second. So we're going to go to the main function right here. In the while loop, we're going to add two lines of code. First, the printf, so which is going to be redirected, you know, to the user2. We'll print hello world. And we'll add the delay in the while loop. So every second, we should see a message on the terminal, hello world. Now build the project. And enter debug. It's going to connect, you know, to our ST-Link. I'm going to switch. We're in debug mode now and we can execute the code. Next step, we are going to configure the terminal inside the cube ID. So to do this, you're going to open a command shell console from cube ID, and then we're going to create basically a new connection. So you're going to select remote connection, and you're going to select the serial port for the connection type. For the ISO, so you're going to keep the ISO-8859-1, and we're going to create Click on new, in order to create a new connection. Okay, so you see this icon right there, right here. Click on command shell console. Now, so normally I think by default it's going to be like this. You're going to select first serial port. We're going to keep the encoding like this for the ISO 8859-1. We're going to create a new uh, connection. So click on new here. So give a name, like terminal. You're going to select the COM port that is associated to your ST-Link. So in my uh, case, that's COM100. And for the board rate, 115 and 200. And then for the data size, that will be 8, so 8 bits, no parity and one bit of stop, and then click Finish, and OK. And now you can see your terminal that is being displayed right here with the message that we send every second, the hello world. Congratulations, this is the end of the lab. You can now stop the execution, and you can close the project.